connecting and downloading from the SRX 800 receiver. In your host, try and connect using the USB. As you can see up in the top hand, left hand side of the screen, there's a USB. And just click on that icon. And once you're connected, you'll see in the lower right hand side of the screen what your model number is. And on the left hand side of your screen, the host that you're running, the version. So try and log on. Click on the log on icon. It says it's logged on from another input. So you're going to have to make sure that we uh, we have to get off of that. And this one happened to be the keypad was logged on. So we go to the keypad icon. And then hit end escape to stop the log. It's data logging right now. So just press end escape. And then 7 for yes to stop code logging. And next, we're just going to hit the log on key and then press number two to log off. As you can see on the screen there. And then now we press done and uh, we're going to attempt to log on again using the host. So press the log on key and then. Uh, you can now see active user USB SRX mode setup. And now we're going to download the data. Go to the data download icon. You can see there's some ID only battery status and receiver configurations and filter changes. Select the download type, all records, and then press the download key. I'm downloading to the desktop to make it easier and sometimes if you have security on your computer it's probably best to go there. I use the time of day 203 and now I'm going to save it. Pressing the save key. It's only 5k so it downloads fairly quickly. Press done and it lists what's on board there. Press OK. Now normally you'd reset the data memory at this point, but I would check your file first. So hit exit, click on exit. And now go to text conversion. You can see it highlighted there at the top. And select, there's 203, the binary file. So select that and then go open. It's going to ask you for your GMT correction. Mine is minus 5 at the moment. Press OK. And there was a flash up in the top left. That signifies that it's just converted that small file. It did not take more than a few milliseconds. OK. So now we're going to look at the files on the desktop. We're going to minimize the host. I'm going to drag and drop the files. First the text file, then the DTA file, and finally the battery record file or BTR file. We'll open it up, show you what's in those battery records, and it's fairly consistent voltage. Now if you have drop downs in voltages or you have a solar panel connection, you can see here on this record um, whether it goes up or down. Mine's on the main power, so it's going to stay fairly consistent. Next up is the DTA file. This shows you a very precise time. It shows you a bit of information about the receiver, serial number, etc., and what channels are involved, but it goes down to about four decimal places in time, making it very precise. And it also allows you to see Sometimes if a tag is is like at a five second burst interval to very precise time management. And finally the text file shows you everything that you that's on board. Every change you made, all your frequencies put into it, voltage status, it virtually has everything. In the da data segment, however, it only shows you just to the second. And now you can go back to your receiver and uh, 
delete the data on board and start it up scanning again.